Hey there, welcome to the garden. My name is Anna, if you're new, um, and today I am doing a really fun project. I'm gonna be planting up one of my favorite, absolute favorite perennial phlox. I already had one in my garden, I'm adding two more, so let me turn you around and show you this amazing flower because it's stunning. So this variety of phlox is called Coral Cream Drop. If you've um, seen any of my other garden tours, anything, you'll have seen this before because as I said, I do have one more of these um, already growing in the garden. And it is just, I mean, I just think this is such an amazing flower. It's very beautiful and it kind of pulls in two different directions. I feel like this um, color pink can either go a bit toward more like the tropical colors or it has some of these deeper tones and so it kind of matches with some of those apricots and um, different you know more like peachy kind of pinks as well so it's a really fun one because it's just super versatile to have in the garden and perennial phlox is very nice it blooms in I would say like early July it starts to really take off um, and then it blooms all the way through a frost. What it'll do is put on a flush like this, and then I'll show you where my other flocks is right now because it's a little bit um, ahead of these guys. So after the first flush of blooms, what you wanna do is not deadhead it. <laughs> Just leave the flower stalks on there. They'll look kind of crummy for like maybe a week, and then they just flush out a whole another bloom, as you can see by the bumblebee here the bees adore it it's totally a favorite with the pollinators um, and then it just yeah it just keeps blooming like this all the way really till the end of the season so it's a really nice long blooming um, perennial as you know with me I like to have the longest blooming perennials I can possible I just always like to maximize bloom time since with my limited space um, you know, it's important to me to have some show going on. But I've had this guy over here for um, a couple years. So this is like a two or three year plant here. You can see how nice and big it's gotten. It gets pretty much full sun, not super, super full sun, but it does absolutely great in that location um, and always looks really good. And what I decided to do was carry this look, you can see it there in the background, carry that look around the whole garden to add a little bit of continuity to my space. So we have this one over here looking gorgeous and then we're gonna add one right there. That's a little spot that gets some nice sun and then over here which also gets some midday and afternoon sun and I think that's gonna look really beautiful as well. And you can see how it kind of pairs with like, um, this is a green twister uh, cone flower. You can see how it kind of pairs with some of those slightly, um, I don't know, more vintage toned flowers. I apologize if you can hear the neighbor's air conditioner. Um, we are in the dog days of summer and all of the air conditioners are on. So we always end up dealing with a little air conditioner noise. I, I'm so sorry. So it's the coral cream drop. I will um, show you this tech. And it gets 18 to 24 inches, although I find because I don't plant mine in the absolute fullest sun, it definitely pulls maybe a little bit taller. It's a long bloomer, showy flowers. That is 100% true, and it blooms summer to fall. Average water, hardiness zone, four through eight. I like this, it says compact habit, and I would say that is true. One thing that I love about the cream drop that I have already is that it keeps a really nice tight form. Um, some of my flowers, especially in that area, because as I said, it's not like the fullest full sun, they tend to kind of flop and reach and stretch. And that coral cream drop just keeps like the most upright, nicest shape, and it doesn't, um, yeah, it just doesn't flop over. I don't even have it staked. So I keep it without being staked and it just, yep, <laughs> the bink is getting in my way. And it just does lovely year after year after year. So I thought I would just get these two planted. I am also gonna plant that green twister um, cone flower next to the phlox over there because I wanna have a little bit of a perennial section on that side of the garden um, as well and kind of marry the two sides of the garden 
they've always felt really separate to me. And, um, you know, I think in a small space, it's nice to have it all kind of a bit more cohesive. And this way, as you pan around the garden, that color is gonna be there again and again and again. So let me get my kneeling pad, put my gloves on, and I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys planted. So I think it looks really nice and really brightens up that spot. I did plant it close to this crepe myrtle tree and it's just kind of because that's the room that I have in my garden. I just have such a small garden um, that things have to get planted close together sometimes. But I'll just keep an eye on it and make sure that it's doing okay. And then I always keep an extra like half bag of mulch so that when I do projects like this during the season, I can just come in and mulch around them um, and that makes it really really convenient and really nice. I do have over here as well a little um, black-eyed Susan plant that I transplanted from the other side so hopefully next year this area will fill in um, and we'll have some more black-eyed Susans growing in there too. I think that would be really pretty. The yellow always looks good with a pink of that tone. So now I'm just gonna plant the other one right there. Oh my gosh, I'm out of breath. I have to say, planting in the July heat when you're pregnant, it's not that easy. It's definitely starting, um, starting to catch up. All right, and there is that one looking so pretty. I'm loving how that kind of catches your eye and brightens up that area. That space was always feeling kind of dark and lost. Um, so that is really nice. Wow, fun. It's so fun to get these planted and I hope it comes across on screen, but it definitely helps for me here in the garden to have that color mirrored throughout the garden. I'm just really noticing that it ties your eye around the whole entire space. And as I garden more in this small area, I'm always constantly trying to battle between wanting to grow different varieties and try different things um, because I, I only have so much room. So, you know, one variety of this and one variety of that is really fun. And I definitely do that with a lot of stuff like, you know, vegetables, the different produce that I'm growing, you know, just pick one of these, one of these, one of these. But when you do some more um, perennial plantings, I'm starting now to realize that picking a few repetitive plants, a few repetitive tones, putting those around the entire space when you have a little tiny garden space like this really makes a big difference. It just sort of settles your eye and helps to kind of 
take you around the garden, I guess. Um, like it just, this is so nice. And when you have these little shady corners, I have to say as well, I really learned that brighter colors, um, they do really help. I've kind of started to pull away from whites. I don't really find myself drawn to planting white flowers as much as I used to. When I first, um, excuse me, when I first was gardening, I really like loved all of the white flowers and I was really putting in a lot of them. Um, now that I've got so much more color in here, I find like the white is almost jarring. I don't mind little whites like that catman over there you know little bursts of white that are really airy like a, a euphorbia or a catmint those i find i really enjoy but the bigger white blooms it's almost like startling and doesn't match so that's been an interesting kind of learning process um, but getting more of this coral cream drop box i know i'm not going to regret it i know i'm going to love it it's such beautiful flower. I'm going to go ahead and water these in. The soil was pretty wet because I did just water not that long ago. But I'm just going to water them in again, make sure that they are nice and happy. And then I am transplanting them in the heat here. I'm going to sit down. There we go. I just had to take a second to sit down so we can chat. Um, whew, when you're gardening in the heat, it's not only a little harder on the plants, it's harder on the gardener too. And you have to be really careful to make sure that you're um, taking care of yourself and hydrating and doing all the things because of course I'm really noticing it in this season in my life but um, just in general the heat is really hard but even though it's warm out um, I haven't had an issue transplanting these um, summer real summer heat loving plants and I did hear um, a couple people at the nursery that were talking about this you know the plants that love the heat they do tend to do better when you're planting them even in this time of year. So even though it's a super warm, um, hot, you know, end of summer here, now that we're starting to get into summer, it's August, I can't believe that. Um, it's still okay to plant, a little riskier maybe, but if you're planting especially some of those like warmer weather things, um, then they, they tend to do okay. So anyways, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, if you have a coral cream drop, let me know. Um, or if you um, have another printing flux that you love, I'd love to hear about that too. And thank you so, so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.